Okay, let's get going. Uh, hello, I'm Bill, and if this is your first time dropping into my channel, welcome. Tonight, I'm going to continue to share uh, some information on PhD2, uh, which I use for auto guiding. Uh, tonight, I'm going to do an actual calibration. So, uh, right now, you just see the uh, PhD2 screen. Uh, I want to move over into the flame nebula area, so let me get that uh, going. Um, I use uh, Carts Du Seal as my planetarium software. So, I'm going to go over to NCG uh, 2024 um, and I'll start the slew. And it will move in probably from up here down into this area. There it comes. Um, so this is kind of part of the workflow workflow process that I would normally follow. Okay, so we're in the end uh, in the flame nebula area. Let's just leave it at that. So uh, now what we want to do is we want to go. Uh, my process is I now want to go into astrophotography tool and I want to do a plate solve. So um, I hit the point craft button and I'm using plate solve 2. So I'm going to go over here to the objects database. Um, I want to be on a deep sky tab. I'm looking for 2024. I search. There it is, the flame nebula. I hit OK. And um, then I hit go to. And now it's going to do its thing. And uh, when it's done, we're going to get uh, a gong. Uh, it's going to take a couple of exposures, and, uh, and then we'll see uh, where we're at at the end when it completes. But let's go back into here. I want to show you how to connect your cameras. Um, down here, there is a button to connect your equipment. I've already got my cameras uh, configured. Uh, but you can um, you can set up new equipment, and if you're setting up a camera for the first time, it's suggested that you use the uh, uh, the new wizard uh, to set that up. Mine are already set up, so I am going to connect, and um, maybe I'll put a an image into this uh, video, but. On the back of my ZWO 120mm Mini, there's a USB connection that goes to my laptop, but there's also an ST4 connection that I could connect that camera into uh, my mount. I don't use that connection. I You can eliminate that cable. Uh, I use uh, EQ Mod to control it, so I'm down uh, to one cable and... Uh, and uh, I'll show a picture of that on where you connect. And then now I'm going to connect my mount. You already see it's uh, EQ Mod ASCOM HEQ56. So I connect that. Uh, and now we are connected. That's the gong. Um, I'm sure I could set the volume on that in some manner. All right. So um, now what we want to do, we have our mount and we have our camera connected. So now I want to start looping. I have set a uh, exposure time of two seconds so uh, Darren and Barath thank you uh, for putting uh, that tip uh, forward to me through the comments I tell you I really appreciate it when people take time uh, to leave a comment uh, because it really helps me out and I'm learning through the process and I'm taking the information you're sharing with me and I'm implementing it so I really appreciate you uh, doing that all right so now um, here we are. We have um, we have our camera view. We're taking two second exposures. It's adjustable. Uh, I won't go into that right now. Uh, next thing we're going to do is this star down here. It's best to let the uh, application pick the guide star. Okay, so it has selected a guide star. We're going to give it a, a second or two. Um, and because I'm, al I'm already calibrated, uh, I've calibrated several times tonight. Uh, again, this was my training night for me to focus on all things PhD2. Um, and the other thing is I'm using a bad pixel map. Uh, 
when you use the new uh, equipment wizard to set up your camera, it'll give you the option to create uh, both uh, dark images, a dark library, which you should. Now the dark library is temperature sensitive, so as we move from winter into summer, you probably uh, want to create another one as we get closer to summer. And then the bad pixel map is very important because you want to make sure that when uh, the application is picking a guide star that it's not pixing, uh, picking a hot pixel. So that bad pixel map will help uh, subtract out the hot pixel so uh, one doesn't get, uh, doesn't get selected. All right, so um, if I just wanted to guide right now since I'm calibrated, I would just hit that button and what we're looking for is we see the green crosshairs on the uh, guide star uh, over in the right hand view here uh, we're getting information about the mass of the star uh, that has been selected and then up here you will see the uh, star crosshairs on the on the guide star um, what you don't want is your peak saturated where you have a flat top and I am still not sure that I have optimally focused my guide scope uh, but I worked earlier the, the goal is to try to get these numbers to be uh, as low as possible by adjusting your focus on your uh, guide scope and then you don't want a lot of fluctuation between the minimum and the maximum whatever you wind wind up at uh, so we're going uh, with that uh, right now uh, down here there's some information about the signal to noise ratio of the guide star it's kind of small and next to that is there's information on which way it's uh, sending commands or corrections to the mount uh, I'm not going to go into that a lot tonight. That was uh, that was not the purpose. Okay, so we are guiding. So I am going to stop guiding by hitting the stop button. Uh, now that everything is stopped, uh, you notice that we're no longer uh, have the uh, guide star in view. So now I'm going to pick the guide star again. It probably picked the same one. And now I'm going to force the calibration so you can kind of see what happens in the display. And the way you force it, uh, while we have the green button here, to force the cal, and we're being indicated that we're in cal over here, if you hit the shift key and then press uh, this button, uh, it'll force calibration. And okay, are you sure you want to force recalibration? And uh, since I don't have a fixed peer, I'll redo a calibration uh, every night and uh, before I do that let me just show you um, I can go up here and there's a tool and review calibration data here is the uh, previous calibration I did tonight you see it's uh, 125 I did around 748 it's 827 right now um, this uh, red is your uh, declination axis this is your uh, right ascension, they should be orthogonal to each other or at 90 degrees to one another. I am about 1.5 uh, off of 90 degrees. Uh, I will learn over time what the acceptable limit is there. Uh, from some uh, videos I saw, there's a great tutorial on the uh, PhD2 uh, homepage. Uh, that digs into this uh, application and kind of how it works. I suggest you take a look at that. I'll put a link into this video. Um, it's a couple of years old. It was when 2.5 came out. Um, I'm currently using 2.69, uh, but it's a good uh, tutorial, and so I, I recommend you take a look at it. Uh, down here, there's some information about my guide scope. Uh, image scale, pixel size, those type of things. Uh, we'll go into maybe that in another time. All right, so I want to, uh, I want to, um, did I do the calibration? Oh no, uh, I want to stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm talking a little bit too much and I'm trying to go fast. Okay, so we're gonna start uh, looping again, start our exposures. Um, 
Okay, we have the, uh, the guide star selected, and now I'm going to uh, shift key and click on this. Are you sure you want to force uh, recalibration? Yes, I am. And how it starts out is with the yellow crosshairs and the box on the uh, guide star. The guide star is within that box. And you'll also see uh, the crosshairs here. And right now, if you look down here, uh, uh, PHD2 is sending uh, commands uh, to the mount uh, to move in different directions. Uh, right now, it's doing some west steps. Um, and we will know we're in calibration when the crosshairs over here uh, are turned uh, to green. And um, let's see, uh, we're also going to take a look at uh, Guiding Assistant. Uh, I'll run this in a little bit once we get uh, in calibration. A lot of information here uh, along with recommendations on changes to make, uh, which is very good. Um, there are some other views here, such as the display target. Uh, I have not taken the time yet to read uh, up on what this is uh, showing me exactly, um, but, uh, but I'll do that. Uh, as you see now, it's going through the east steps, and now it's clearing some backlash. So there is information on what's happening uh, within the calibration process. Uh, but what we're uh, really waiting to see are these crosshairs turn green and then it will start guiding so and when it does its uh, calibration it ultimately then returns the uh, guide star back to the center uh, of the crosshairs and again um, if i if i didn't mention it uh, you want to avoid the peak of this signal uh, being saturated and um, these values here are giving us information about the mass of the guide star and when you're trying to uh, focus your guide scope uh, the idea is to try and get these uh, numbers uh, to be as low as possible uh, so I may still be a little bit out of focus on my uh, on my guide scope uh, while this is happening we're just gonna let it finish um, If you have an issue and can't do calibration in the sense that it doesn't complete, it may run all the way out to about 60 steps. So far, once I was able to calibrate, it's generally uh, somewhere between 8 to 14 steps uh, to, um, to complete the calibration. Um, when we get guiding again, there's a bunch of information down here, uh, right ascension, aggressiveness, hysteresis, and uh, declination aggressiveness. These I've all left at default. Uh, I don't know um, under what conditions I should change them. Okay, so our calibration has been completed. We're guiding. Our crosshairs are green the guide star is returned back to the center of those crosshairs. Again, I'm, I'm going to close this view. I don't know enough about it yet to speak about it. So, um, And then there's also some information that's being uh, populated down here. And also, in time, I'll learn to read these uh, slopes. And then these little blue spikes or red spikes, I believe, are... Um, our uh, pulses being sent to the mount to correct uh, for error in movement. And I still have a lot more uh, to learn there. And then uh, real briefly, here's the brain. And in the brain, you can get to your global commands. Um, there's information about your camera. Uh, there's uh, information about your guiding. And an interesting uh, piece of information is the calibration steps. You want to verify that the value here is the actual value for your uh, guide scope. Uh, everything else I've pretty much left default. And then um, for the algorithms, I've not, I've not touched anything. Um, so I don't know enough yet. 
uh, to touch them. So, okay, I uh, just wanted to make you aware that that information is available. And again, you know, we're guiding, and uh, here we're seeing error, and um, I believe it's in arc seconds, um, but I have some more things to do there. And then you can uh, turn on trend lines, uh, and I'm not quite sure what the trend line is showing me yet, so I have a little bit of more uh, reading uh, and exploring to do there. But I wanted to show you the guiding assistant. Um, all the forums that I've read, um, you know, people have asked the person if they're having an issue, do you, did you turn on your guiding assistant? So right now what's happening is it's starting to measure. Um, up here you'll see the elapsed time that the guiding assistant has been running. Um, and uh, the sample that it's taking, again, the exposure time, uh, the date uh, or the start time of when it started to do its measurements. There's some uh, information over here um, that, is, that is changing uh, relative right ascension declination. And uh, the number down here that I'm interested in is the polar alignment error. I don't know what, um, earlier on my first calibration tonight, it was 0 0.1. Um, so I don't know if, if I, I moved my mount or, or something happened along the course of the night uh, to move it off there. And I don't know yet uh, when should I be concerned. Uh, you know, what is the threshold the min and the max that is acceptable if I see this uh, value here. Uh, you know, if it exceeds a certain amount, should I stop my uh, data acquisition and, and uh, go back and check my polar alignment? The, those type of things I still have to learn yet from the information that is being um, uh, provided here. So it's generally good to let this run a couple of minutes. Um, all right, so this thing has been running. I think it's been at least a couple of minutes. Yeah, two. Yeah. So okay, I'm gonna stop it. Um, and then when you stop it, it it goes through a series of steps. Um, so we'll we'll wait for that to happen. Um, all right. So let's let this um, follow up. And uh, so this will be getting near the end. Uh, I just want to review the information that is available once that completes. So if you like this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up. And as always, uh, I'm looking to build the community, so please consider subscribing. But what is really the most important is uh, comments and questions. And I really appreciate it when people take time to make a comment. Uh, you know, from me reading the comments, I'm getting helpful information that's helping me get up my learning curve uh, more quickly. And if you're new uh, to this area, uh, that information I would imagine would help you as well. Okay, great. We kind of have finished uh, the information here and guiding has been uh, turned back on. And so this graph will start to stabilize. Um, so, again, uh, here is the recommendations over in this area here. Try to keep your exposure times in the range of 1.5 to 3.5. I haven't set it to. Uh, oh, let me, let, me, uh, let me change this down to 1.5 just to see what happens to the signal and the mass and all, all that over here. Um, then it says try setting RA minimum move to 0 0.10. This is consistent with the earlier uh, calibration. So I'm going to hit apply. It will apply that change um, to the guiding instructions that are being sent uh, to the mount. Try setting the declination minimum move to 0 0.15. I'm going to apply that. Now, here, here's what's interesting is backlash is greater than or equal to uh, 3130 milliseconds you may need to guide in only one declination direction currently north so I'll um, I'll start to dig into that and research that and see what um, uh,
how critical that error is and uh, what steps I might be able to take. But there's clearly a lot of information here uh, that is helpful uh, I'm, I'm finding out. So, okay. So let me uh, close that. And I think there was one more thing I wanted to do. Um, okay, yeah, as, um, as I reduce this down to 1.5, um, clearly we're, uh, we're not saturating. I think these values have maybe dropped a little bit, maybe not. Uh, so I'll, I'll run at 1.5, although, um, according to Darren and Barrett, uh, two is a recommendation. So I'm going to go back to there. Okay. So this is uh, PhD two. Hopefully, uh, this information was helpful. Uh, step through how to connect your cameras, how to get the image uh, process uh, started, how to select your uh, guide star, and then how to force a calibration. Um, shared a little bit about the uh, guiding assistant. Oh, and let's uh, just take another look since we did a new calibration. Let's uh, review the calibration data set. And um, I don't know if I can go back to a previous one, uh, but again, the orthogonality error is 0 0.8. So again, I think I'm within tolerance. I need a little bit more information to understand what the tolerance acceptable tolerances are and then also you see that the uh, right ascension calibration uh, was complete in eight steps and the declination required nine and I think that's um, I think that's pretty good and again uh, I will run this calibration uh, each night a new calibration each night because I'm moving my mount in and out uh, each night uh, doing a new polar alignment each night so I'm going to take the time to do a calibration uh, each night. If I had a fixed peer, I believe uh, you could do the calibration once and uh, and just let it run. So, okay, um, you know, give me your feedback whether this is helpful or not. Uh, but uh, I do appreciate you dropping into the channel, uh, and see you next time. Thanks.